they also sent us an estimate to do the flagging. And uh, we're in the process of, of going through um, whether that's going to happen or not. Uh, that's, I think that's where we're at. I don't know if there's anything else to add. Uh, there's going to be a meeting on the 26th. We're hoping to wrap up all this kind of back office work about flagging, putting the flags on a plan, and then being able to discuss it. And that should be at the meeting, hopefully right now, the meeting on the 26th. If that seems like it's not going to happen because the scheduling is too tight, then we would probably push that off because we would need all those components to actually have a discussion. At least that's my feeling. But Yeah, I, I think it might be a pretty ambitious to get that that yep. done and a report in in that amount of time get it on the agenda so um, so mr castellucio i see you here just yeah. wanted to you know I, say say that to you yeah i've got a question when whenever you're ready sure yeah, yeah i can open it up because we're not really discussing it but if, it, if it's brief certainly yeah i just wanted to see if i could get a copy of the report before the the next meeting yeah, if you send me an email request, I'll send you a copy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions from the public? Okay. Uh, 705, we have our request for termination of applicability. Do you have to make a motion to continue? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll make a motion Thanks, to continue Dave. NOI 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149 uh, Howard Street. I'll second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 705, a request for determination of applicability, 2019-7, um, 85 Eaton Street, map 17, lots 268, Donahue. Yes, Mr. Donahue. Oh, you got the, um, you give those to Chuck. Sure. Thank you. So did everyone get a chance to look at this? Um, Anika and Chuck yeah, did. I, I did, did too. Okay, great. So. What's that? Okay. Yeah, I have 84 on this. What, what is it, Chuck? Oh, just 84 Street on the site. It says 85. The agenda says 85. The site oh, is okay. really 84. Yep. All right. All right. Would you introduce yourself and describe your project? My name is Neil Donahue. I live at 84 Eaton Street. Uh, what we're looking to do is to, there's our current deck there. We're looking to extend out um, about two feet further out and then run it the length of the house. Uh, we'll be putting in seven sauna tubes. Uh, that's really about it. And those sauna tubes are. are uh, hand dug. What's that? Were they hand? Are they going to be hand dug? They would. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Um, where's the Where's the wetland? Uh, it's way in the. Uh, so this is the backyard area. It's kind of the river run or the stream runs back here. Yeah. And so Dave and Anika and Chuck. Um, okay. Right, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would just say that I believe the wetland is almost directly in back of the right, fence. Right, it's a Yeah, there's a small, there's a couple of things. There's uh, there's a fence, there's, um, is it weed? Are you creating the uh, knotweed or the it's fresh like weed? I don't know exactly yeah, what it's, it's called, but it looks like it. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I was um, talking to the applicant and said that, you know, anything that he does in back of that three foot area, we're gonna be fine with it except for applying pesticides or herbicides. So you just need a licensed applicator to do that <laughs> if you ever took that step. Um, and then, show me in. any other questions? I guess I, I had a question. Um, so when I went back and did the site visit, there were a number of uh, holes dug yes. in that area. Yep. And, um, and I guess I'm just wondering when when this deck is finished, what how is the ground going to be 
finished? Is part of it going to be gravel under the deck, or what's what's happening under the deck? So it's going to, as of right now, it's all gravel, and it'll probably stay gravel. Because that's what's currently there now is gravel. Okay, so gravel under the deck and outside of that is... Correct. It's is all gravel. You see... <laughs> existing <laughs> stones well. on yeah. the... So there's basically, it's a stone walkway that goes here, and then this whole area is gravel. And a long time ago, it used to be a pool, and I believe they filled it in with gravel. I'm trying to remember what it looked like when I was there. I don't remember it being a solid chunk of gravel. Behind the house? Yeah. That was just uh, it just surface area is gravel. There's some grass in there too. Yeah. yeah. There's on the um, side. Right. There's a, like a small shed here. This right. is a grass area. This is all okay. grass. And then okay. this whole area right there is gravel. All right. Okay. Any other questions from the commission members? Any um, questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? I think a motion of, uh, with negative determination for RDA 2019 7 8 5 8 3 second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send that out to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Okay. Seven um, seven ten sure. is a um, notice of intent two seven eight um, dash zero seven one eight one twenty eight Fairchild Drive, Mass forty five lots two Doppler. Hey. Okay. backyard for him and his family. Um, hoping to do is cut into this retail a little bit, break some of it down here to flatten it out. Um, install stairs coming off the deck. We have flat air padding area right here. Um, there's some down here that we need to see existing deck um, behind the house. I should also mention that this, this deck is going to be extended out a little bit. Location of it right here in the tan. This orange portion shows where the deck is it's supposed to be expanded slightly. There are, you know, ready prefers to protect all trees and the buffer zone, understandably. Um, and so, as we mentioned last meeting, there will be 19 trees supposed to be removed. Um, the point that we, we wanted to make was that uh, 14 of those are 10 inches, in, 10 inches or less. Uh, DBH and 13 are pines. Um, I know Miss Longley uh, was out there with us and, and Chuck, and a number of them are already getting to lean towards the house. Um, the wind tends, tends to be blowing that direction. Um, so eventually, <laughs> most likely, they will need to come down, at least some of them. Um, still, we're replanting a number of the of these uh, 11 uh, green giant on variety along here. Um, we, we're counting those as trees within the replacement uh, count the uh, uh, bylaw. Remaining uh, eight trees are replicated with 26 shrubs along the erosion control line you see along here. Um, so we're eight over the required replication, assuming you cut all of these as shrubs. Uh, this existing retaining wall right here is an extremely poor condition. It's starting to fall into the wetland and did, did actually receive a negative determination from from you guys, as you might remember, um, I believe it was a year or so ago. Um, so the big thing to here, I guess, 
um, the key points is that there's a retaining wall proposal on this side to help keep the, the soil up here, up here, and, and allow this to be flattened out and ex excavated into a bit. Um, from down here, we are proposing a portion of the retaining wall within the 25 foot zone of natural vegetation. Uh, I know that was the big point last week, or last meeting rather, um, and that no structures should be proposed uh, you know, within this area or within this area. Uh, but after reviewing the bylaw and looking into it a little bit, a little bit further and, and knowing the site conditions, um, we felt that because this is already being maintained as this lawn, the nearest trees are 10, 15 or so feet away, uh, this is our much vegetation. In this case, it could be, could have some leeway, and it's our feeling in the bylaw, or I'm sorry, it's our understanding, if you're reading through the bylaw, that you guys have a little bit of wiggle room um, in terms of finding that setback for the zone of natural vegetation. Um, a couple of those points are, are in the letter that uh, we provided to you guys. And it should also remind you guys that the retaining wall is only proposed to be one foot into existing grade, so any trees that might grow there um, shouldn't be too impacted by a, a minor structure. You know, if it was a foundation or a frost wall or something like that, I would totally understand um, the need to protect that area for, for roots and, and trees to, to grow and expand. Um, but in this case, there really isn't any zone of natural vegetation all on here. Um, it's just lawn and then some sparse vegetation in here and two trees all the way down here next to the VW. We've also provided you with the landscaping plan, which clearly shows the, the planting and the planted key. Uh, we're up in front here. Most of the properties within the 100 foot buffer zone. I know last week we didn't have that with us. Um, so we just wanted to show you that, uh, what species we're going in or what we're proposing. Um, so with that, do you have any questions? One of the, the big questions that come up the last time I was here was the, the height and the grade of that new um, stone wall that's there. And one of the other points that was brought up when repairing the existing block wall was the height of the existing block wall. And then the other stone wall that's going to be just inside of that and on top of it and the, the total height of that wall and what was going to be done to, um, to accommodate that structurally. Uh, for any substructures that were going to be put in there uh, to make certain that that was structurally stable and structurally sound to uh, stand and not fall down as the other block wall has. Yeah, so I, I can answer that. I don't think that was asked last time. I know we talked about it a year ago when we did it. Uh, the existing wall that collapsed uh, doesn't have any stone backing. Right. Which was problem number no, I'm one. talking about right where the, the stone wall there at that corner. That was right. something that was asked yes. and mentioned during the last right. meeting. So, and so that's this, not something that you addressed tonight. Yeah, sorry, I should have I should have I should have mentioned that. So this is this is going to be much lower. This grade is about one one fourteen. This area in here is about one eighteen. So this will just kind of die right into the bottom of the side of, of this wall. Right. Know. But you have 118 to 114, so if you have 118, then that means you're going to be coming up about four feet with the stone wall, yep. the new stone wall, adjacent to the repaired um, landscaping block wall, which is already well over four feet. Now you're getting into a structural wall where you're going to have to satisfy requirements for the building inspector in the town of Reading. So that's one of the things that we asked about last last meeting as to how you're gonna accommodate that so, and plan for that. So this is less than four feet, there, it won't require a building permit? Um, but when you're right on top of the other wall, you're right basically on top of it. So so really this wall is going to be elevated above, above this wall. This right. wall is completely independent of this wall. The structural integrity of this is is they, not is not dependent on this wall at all. They they don't tie in and support each other. I there, guess there's no way to say it. They right. they feather in to each other here, but these don't have to touch. This or support each other. So this, this grade isn't supporting the wall above it. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a better way to say it. Uh, this existing wall actually feathers out, so right. it's you know 70 feet plus or minus by 30 inches at its highest point. Its highest point is actually right over here. Yeah. Uh, you're saying that the wall, the, the wall at that point where the stone wall is the new, the new stone wall is going. With this. So this is basically a wall, 
and, and right here with this wall is your, your yeah. one block you're one block tall sure. I, so I'm gonna, I'll try inches. it another way yeah. so between the house and that retaining wall that you're talking about that's closest to the wetland yeah. the lawn is flush with the top of that wall so it is measuring now. it is, it is measuring now. from it, it, it should be, be at the end so they're measuring from inside the lawn area to get less than four feet. Right. And, it, and apparently they've looked at it enough to know that on the corner that meet up against the wetland, it should be less than four feet also. Right. So. We, we, yeah, we purposely graded it out so that we wouldn't, wouldn't have to actually install a real structure, especially within, you know, the 35 and the 25. And, and I guess a better way to say it is this corner, the corner you're worried about where that ties in. That's not a 30-inch wall there. That, that's, this is literally. Oh, I understand that, but from from basically, if you took from the top of the the landscape block wall Correct. to the top of that corner that's coming around of the stone wall at its highest point where it dies back into the grade, where you you're bringing that grade up. What's right. the height of that stone wall at that point? Not Sorry. where your finger is coming. Go, yep. Come this way. This way? Yes, at the end of the wall there. So I, at this point here, it's 118, and then this is actually part of the hill, so just below that, it's 116 feet. That, this is so interesting. There, there's a great change here if you, you look at the plan. So this says 118 here, so that dies out at 118. And then about four feet after that, you're at 116. And that's part of the hill, so you're, you're dying in this whole section of our backyard, going back into the west. Right. And into our neighbor's yard, uh, the Samar. So there's a big separation between our yard and theirs. That's a hill, including in the back of the house. And there's a drop off over to this section of the house. Um, so the grade here is different than the grade over here. Yeah, this uh, in the this this dra drawing that I have right here is of no help at all for there. There's no gradient lines or anything on this on this drawing that I have. That's a, isn't that the landscape one? Yeah, we have that. From, uh, we do, we do uh, have yeah, I don't have that packet with me. Do you want? I have an extra copy. So this is what I'm talking about here. Right, the point here, you're at 118. This is at 114, which means from the top of this wall, if this stays where it is at 114, from this point here, wait a minute, let me finish. From this point here to the top of this wall is four feet. So how you, so when you take the, the, this, this part of the wall here, which is pretty high, and then you add this. I don't know what the the, the, the additional height is, but you have this wall basically about that. on top of this packet. wall is here. Not? So, and that so, was oh, a I'm question. Sorry. So this isn't a wall. This, this right here. This yeah. is not a wall. That is the fence line. Oh, okay. I this yeah. This, yeah. this, this, yeah. this yeah. So there is a wall there now, though, right? This, this is this is the wall right here. It ends here. It ends right here. And what we have right now is an existing stone wall. Yeah, I know. Oh, yep, I know what that is. Yeah. So this is this, this, this is the this, this is just so this is just this is just grade. This. It just slopes off regular uh, dirt. Right. Oh, this is the end of the grading okay. right here. One sixteen, and then it ties back to natural. And you're one sixteen and one fourteen, about twenty feet okay. back. Sorry for the confusion. No, I want to show you something. Okay, I guess um, I'll just, I'll just, since I've been sort of mentioning this, I'll throw out another yeah. question when you're ready. Yeah. But it carries on through your whole document. So the, uh, the proposed, the proposed additional bump out of the deck in the page, page orientation here in the bottom, bottom right corner there. Um, so that's an encroachment into the 25 foot, um, and that requires a variance. Um, and I just want to comment on that. The second thing I just want to comment on, um, you know, I'm impressed with the amount of plantings. Um, however, the plantings are all outside of that 25 foot buffer. Um, I know they're inside the 100 foot, but truly the 25 is there for you know, to be the buffer between the wetlands and 
you know what I mean? So so that's the purpose of the 25. So we really planted the heck out of everything we could. Right, I understand. All on this no, stretch. I, I get yeah, that. Yeah, try to, try to enhance the buffer zone. And right. I know that you know there's really no other area down there that we could enhance. And, I just, and truly up here, we're really not getting much of a... And you, you could plant in the lawn on top of that wall. But you, uh, it on um, near that deck. You mean over right here? Right, the 25 foot zone. That's that's driveway. I'm sorry. That's driveway. Well, this, that's, that's not driveway. Right? Here, that's lawn. This, lawn. this is I mean, that's this, lawn. This right now is the only just is they're trying to maintain that as existing lawn. I guess right is the hope. Um, we're right. dealing with a retaining wall here, so we don't want to you know introduce too much disturbance there. But um, you're right. We could we could potentially put plantings there. Um, I mean, from from a wetland standpoint. You know, I, I understand, I do understand the desire for lawn, but from a wetland standpoint, like that 25 foot zone is for uh, buffer vegetation. And I understand you've got existing conditions there as is, so I don't want to see additional encroachment into that, or if there is, let's offset, you know, if you're going to put in a variance for the additional encroachment, let's see some more plantings in that area. So, so our, our hope was to keep all those plantings below the wall. You know, the yard right now, it's, it's mostly weeds and overgrown, so that's why we proposed the 26 shrubs along the Right. What, was it at some point lawn? I, I remember the pit, the, um, the, that the fire circular the fire pit. Pit. Yeah, this, yeah, this that's is all existing lawn. Yeah. Okay? It's collapsed. The wall's collapsed. So we've lost about two and a half, maybe four to five feet of the lawn at that point where it collapsed. Uh, so far, so I have a little, you know, temporary fence put up there so my kids don't fall off the wall. Um, but that was all existing lawn with the fire pit, and then really most of the wetlands vegetation underneath that wall has been dead, and some of dead for a long time, a lot of dead branches and stuff back there. So our point with this and the proposal was to actually make it a nice wetlands view. If you look at my neighbor's house uh, to the east, she actually has a bunch of great ferns and stuff like that. The white ones look really attractive relative to my property. My, so the point of this was actually to handle some of that mitigation. Um, if you wanted a small line in there, I, I'm completely open that. I'm not against adding more plantings in here. Or rearranging. I'm not saying. Yeah. You've got a lot of plantings. Yeah. You know, a lot. I mean, if, if this is, and I, I have trouble looking at this, um, having received it tonight, I haven't had a time to really look at closely, but I have a hard time looking at this and understanding, is all of this new plantings? Uh, or is, no, no, is no, no. Some, some of this some, existing? Or existing. Some would be moved. Uh, so I, this project, that's kind of what I'm trying yeah, to get understand. Yeah, this too. project is really focused on the section of the house from the access point back. Uh, we, we had a landscape architect drop an entire plan. As landscape architects do, they yeah. generally go overboard. Uh, I don't think we would want to do all those plans. It would be too much. We have a landscape architect. Yeah, what yeah, you yeah. say? Yeah. <laughs> Is that true, Carl? It's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Carl, you would probably look at it and think it's a little crowded. I, I think it's a little crowded I, when I look at it. There's a lot do of you plans. Have a uh, I, I'm not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's, a, there's a lot of plans for what you're thinking, right. especially as plans grow. Right. 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 Fill out. Right. Here we go. Uh, the reality is, is our front yard sits on a hill. Right. The majority of our front yard is a much hill, yeah. which is where most of those plans would go. The, the reason most of the plants are in the front yard is because the front yard is the entire curb of the house where we have that giant loose bed, and there's not much we can do in the front yard. You can in love with the front yard, really, this without is putting this some this new wall, which would theoretically leave some of the street in the front. So our purpose was to create the yard space in the back. Yard. Sure. I mean, I mean, that's the logical thing for a homeowner to do is to have the yard space <laughs> in the back. So, no, I understand. I understand the competing interests here. I just had to voice our, our side of that and just let you know that, you know, from my standpoint, you know what? I'm, what I'm asked to do is try to so I get it, preserve so and protect the habitat here. area right. and the function of the wetlands. Yes. Right. So I just had. Yeah. And I think, in, in your, to your point, if, if this was a new construction scenario, it would be it would not make sense to do anything in this area. But because we're dealing with existing lawn, 
if we're right, expanding if it, a deck slightly, are we really impacting any of the interests of the act or the bylaw? Right. If it's I, new I construction, right, the deck would be it would not be where exactly. it is. So. But in this, in this scenario, I, I don't feel like we are yeah, impacting the interests yes. protected in the act or the, or the bylaw. But to your point, you're, you are right. This is, are you going to address the variance or? Um, I, I do intend to address the variance encroachment on the 25 foot. Um, so this this was addressed. Uh, no, I'm talking about the deck expansion. Yeah, so it's a small deck expansion, but it's still an expansion into the 25. Okay. Um, so uh, why don't we uh, we can use this? Okay, so yeah. something to think about <coughs> because um, we we just got these plans tonight, and we you know we'd like some time to review them. I know. Um, I mean, I mean, we usually ask for them like the Thursday before, so we can get it and and spend some good time looking at the plants and where they are and stuff like that. I just thought I'd give you my initial yeah. feedback. Do you, do you like more time to look at the landscaping plan? I, or, or I don't want to know what other people think, but I actually don't have a problem with the landscape plan, and I, I also think I really don't need any additional time for the proposed deck expansion. That deck is eight feet in the air, and it's. Right. Um, and we're talking about maybe a three foot, of three feet by eight feet. And it's up in the air. And it's, we're not, we're not. I don't think doing anything further than um, is in there. So I, I really don't have a problem with that either. Yeah, there's also no intrusion into the ground as, as part of the expansion of this deck. They're just the, the piling is just sitting on top of the surface. So as far as the plant list goes, you can see that. Um, um, there's, a, there's a key, I think. Yeah, no, I think this is, I was going to comment that the, the, it's a nice plant variety. And I think what is, I'm just seeing the 25 foot buffer here now. I mean, I think you clearly, it, no, a proposed three to four foot, like the, the size, is that what you're planting at? Or like the three to four foot list, uh, the size of the plant, is that what's going in? Yeah, that's the proposed and priced plant list. Yes, so, that's a, so, so everything that's on that plant list is yeah. proposed and has been priced by the contractors we have looking at the property. Um, but just for the section of the project we're going to complete this year, mm -hmm. which is not the front. So just the comment was that, that those are nice, mature, those are large shrubs going in, which is helpful. You know, that's, uh, for survivability. Sure, right? yeah, that's big. I mean, 16 yeah. foot, 3 to 4 foot, that's... Yeah. That's, that's good. I just have I have one question that, that I had that I can't see the note here and it might be staring me in the face but uh, the vegetation proposed for inside the stone wall oh, so inside here it, <coughs> down where the new stone wall is going those oh, yeah, six seven yeah have they not noted on the landscape no no okay um, I actually if they're not labeled on that and I'm not actually positive what they are but okay. they'd be some kind of native variety because they're so close to the west okay these six or seven Looks like a They kind of look like the same. It says which alder. It, yeah, the, they might, the, the, they might actually be smaller. No, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. nomen looks the same, but right. it's just small. I just it, it wasn't labeled. That's all. And I should also mention that the, the property's not within the aquifer protection district, and then you mentioned that last. There's no wall. I guess great. I have a question for you, Chuck. Uh, yeah. I, I will here. How do we proceed, or how does the applicant proceed there. in regards to um, no, the variance low, for the deck portion, the but, new deck extension? Oh, that's all I need. Not that. Didn't do the deck. Didn't do the variance. No, there is a variance request, but I'm not sure it only addresses the wall or if it encompasses um, the deck, or if we exclude the deck because it really doesn't didn't count the structure or no, I would say yeah it probably includes the deck um, additional work inside that area so do we need something very specific in lines of in terms of the request for the variance so well, than I think we just got the variance tonight right okay. yes and I don't know what it says but if you just wrote <laughs> and the deck also right I think that would be fine um, it, it, okay, let me see. Um, as mitigation for the encroachment into this zone, the applicant is proposing to plant native shrub species within the existing vegetated buffer zone to help further enhance the biodiversity in the area. And this planting plan is not, this is a robust planting plan. 
Would you agree? It's, I don't it is. I, it is no, robust. Yeah, that's what, if I'm seeing that here, then yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, those are large plants. And it's, and it's connected. <coughs> Right. Then, it's and connected there is a, to the wetlands. There is a canopy, right? I'm seeing this yeah. existing trees. Yeah. I think so those I, will do yeah. well. The clethra, you know, the corn, the dogwood. I mean, that's so just from a survival standpoint. <laughs> yeah, we realize that it's not every day that someone comes and, and wants to request something within the 25 foot, but because this is existing lawn, and we are hopefully improving the resource areas and enhancing it and the biodiversity of it, then. In this case, because the zone of natural vegetation exists further down here, um, the commission might find it that it's okay with the proposed enhancements. So I guess the question goes back to what I just said to you. That how do we actually, are we bound by, are we required to have some kind of a written formal? Yeah, so we don't, you know, there's a couple of things. We, we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, start new, a new process right and so that can be just added that could be something that's modified between this meeting and the next I mean I think right. that's the way we're right. going yeah. where okay. I mean I wouldn't recommend closing or issuing tonight no. but at the next meeting I could prepare the order of conditions and you can close and issue it on that night okay and then but make sure you have whatever you need Okay. Whatever the court request is, I know that you wanted to have time and you wanted to add the deck to the variance request. I'm not sure the applicant needs to provide anything else. I don't think so. I, no, I don't think I so. I just want to know from Carl if you recommend any changes or additions. Or no, I mean, the only comment was if you like the ferns, you could throw in some pockets of fern, they'll spread over time. <laughs> but no, I think that's a a nice plant list and the sizes are great so we often like comment that if they're planting these one gallon pots that they'll have a good chance of survival so so at this point we uh, move to continue and then hopefully well are there close. any questions from the oh. public hearing, hearing none so can i make a motion to continue uh noi 270-0718 128 fairchild drive to 22nd. 26th. 126. Yeah, no. 26. June, 20, June 26th. Oh, June 26th. Um, with the hope of uh, closing and issuing an order of conditions when the, if the proper uh, variance documents come into your office. Okay. <coughs> and it, during past meetings, um, it's just literally been. Uh, somebody sitting down I mean even at the meetings uh, a consultant has sat down and said written on the back of the actual right. document as part of this variance I'm you know were you there for some of those meetings I don't know if you were but I think it was but I don't know I'm just, yeah I, I don't where, where the variance was, was where the variance was written at the meeting with right. the regs there and just you know a couple sentence added um, you know I'm sure it could be drafted and emailed and and in the interest of, of saving yeah. Michael another visit, is there any way it could be conditioned if we're only looking for one sentence, including the deck, you know, in the letter, maybe as, as a condition of the approval that we supply shop with the included uh, deck in the right. letter? Do you have a, 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 an issue with that, Chuck? No. Is that, I thought that's where we were going. Yeah, that's where we were going. Well, <laughs> well, I'm saying could we could we save a, an additional you know trip out here if we supply oh, you yeah, the middle letter yeah. instead I don't think of any other reason to. No, I yeah. I had said supplying him with the the documents outlined in the the variance. Okay. Between no. Between now and the next meeting. Okay. No, I, I'm saying I I was hoping to save the next visit to this meeting if if we're only asking for one sentence in a letter instead of right. coming back no. out. Okay. He, I just wanted to. Ask he doesn't have to come back. Michael's, no. No, 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 I know for his sake. I, I know he loves to come here, but he doesn't have to come back to No, I, I, I only ask in the interest of helping him move along with his project yeah. faster that we could supply Chuck with the, with the letter with the additional sentence instead of having to wait until the next meeting. Could could that be a condition of the approval tonight instead of waiting until the next meeting to issue an order? And if you're not comfortable with that, it's fine. It you won't get your, your order until the next meeting, right? Yeah, that's fine. And, and it sounds like you guys are saying 
get an order in the next meeting which means I can retain right. a contract at this point. Right. And they, right. they would retain pricing subject to the order yeah. conditions. And then you have ten day when you get there's a ten day appeal process after you get the order condition. So yeah, we we wouldn't start until mid to late August anyway, okay. which, which gives us plenty of time. To yeah. So typically, I, be I don't have any problem with that order. scenario. Okay. 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 So motion to continue? Yeah, yeah. we're going. There goes Stella. Hey, we said that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so missed that. No one seconded. Second. Second. Well, let's call all Scott. Those, all those in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, can, you can have it back because if this is the same one I had from last meeting, yes. I have this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <coughs> we have a request for determination of applicability 2019-5, 35 Acadia App, map 19, lots 8, Steen Bruggen. Um, hi. How are we doing? Okay. So you guys came out and looked at the 35 foot line. Um, I spoke with Chuck earlier this week. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable um, <coughs> stating right now that the 35 foot line is where I'd have to stay right now because of financial conditions to get the trees that I need taken down in the driveway. We won't put up a fence in the back. The only question I have is I provided um, Chuck with a photo of the property. Um, from 1956 showing that it was unvegetated. I'm asking if we could go into the 25 foot in the future. So I'm just gonna put that. Um, look at the 35 are aerial. Um, so this is the subject property here. This is the river which was actually a moved river. There's not a tree anywhere on that property in 1956. And when I, in the 1970s, there were those pine trees, but this was grass. I played football back there. So I'm just asking if I could go to that 25 foot line eventually. Uh, right now, it's my main concern is those five massive pines and those two smaller trees that are right up on the house. And we had no problem with yep, those, those, those trees. <coughs> um, you know, I, I don't know, from my perspective, you're talking about this in the future. It won't be probably three or four years, so that's why I'm saying I'm not. I'm you might not be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, the commission may not be the same, yeah, but the other the thing is you're also may talking. Not be the same, and um, can't answer that question. Yeah. Uh, I'm not asking you to give me an answer to the 35, the 25. 25. I'm just stating I want to put on record that it, there was document show, or mm -hmm. a photo okay. showing there was no vegetation in that yep. property. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it was lawn at one time. I hope you understand that there's been a lot of laws and regulations that have changed since 1956 oh. relative to <laughs> conservation and regulation. So I hope you're really not using that as a basis of going to the 25 foot line at this mm, point. No, I'm basically saying that, you know, the, one of the questions was, is, was it ever lawn? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm I, telling you yeah. it was once lawn, and I'm, yeah. you know, I have some evidence that. Might have been cows and chickens and camels there at one they, time, they, too, they, but they at this were. point, it's, <laughs> I don't think that that really is not germane to what we're here for tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, utilize exactly what the same, you know, the neighbors had the same same conditions. I'm just yeah. trying to get to, you know, close to where they are. I I'm still won't be back to where the neighbors' lawns go, but um, for right now, you know, the driveway is a thing, and the, the more or less the trees, those pines are very, they make me very nervous, that, that, that we're all pines. Isn't it amazing that that uh, weather thing is still there? Yeah, yeah well, like it just was taken out, yeah. If you go to the other photo, um, the all. The, the weather station is all, still in the back. The weather station. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is the actual, na the whole neighborhood. That's where the Barrow School sits. And 93 yeah. runs right there. Right. So it's, it's showing you, you know, this was a, a, a photo of the, of the, the neighborhood when it was just finished. It's an interesting photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was amazed. I still, we still had it. <laughs> yeah. But you can see that the, you know, all the homes, and the, you know, the river had to have been moved. It could never have run that straight. Yeah. Looking at it today. Yeah. You look at it. It was never. It wasn't it's original there. It was moved there. 
but mm -hmm. but so right now we're, we're really concerned and we will stay with the 35 foot line um, I just may come back maybe in two years to move the lawn back if we decide to do a building permit but right now that's high in the sky for us Okay. So at this point, we're just approving the trees that he requested to cut. The trees, yeah, and yeah. trees in the driveway. Yep. So I talked okay. to Jim and uh, before the meeting, and I wrote the uh, determination based yep. on our discussion. Okay. Which I, I don't have any trouble with with what we discussed and what was in, evident in the field when we went out for the site visit. So I would I would go to approve the request. Um, any comments from the public? Okay. Uh, motion to issue a negative determination with conditions. Second. Second. Carl B. Yes. All those in favor? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we sign here? I think so. Good stuff. Are we going to sign this? At the end. Okay. All right. 7:30. Uh, request for determination of applicability 2019-9-12-1124 Main Street, Map 39, Lot 142, Gill. So, um, if, if you want to, uh, should I start or should Sure, I, sure. go so ahead, Chuck. So I was called by a neighbor about um, some trees being cut and a, uh, an area being filled in. So I went out to 1124 Main Street and um, uh, met um, Tenzing and his wife and uh, talked about what was going on and they agreed to uh, come in and talk to the commission and to file a permit for the work. Uh, they had, um, before tonight, they had cut down uh, several trees. Uh, most of the trees had uh, large cavities of uh, rot in them, and they had um, cleared out a little bit of the area. The, the, the yard um, on the right-hand side of the house has um, very little open space to it. Uh, it's taken up by driveway, and then the rest is just real wooded and overgrown. On the left side, hand side of the house, there's more of a open lawn area. Uh, so since then, we've been working on plans to try to get the commission to understand, you know, what the job is and where the work will actually happen. The commission had a site visit yesterday. We met Tenzing at the property, and everyone talked to them, so I'm going to stop right there. And if anyone has anything to add about their observations on the site visit from the commission, please chime in. Um, some of the trees, um, we agree that uh, were cut down had uh, significant uh, rot in the middle of the stumps that were left, and also the, the tree that had been cut down. Um, and it seemed that the other trees that wanted the, they wanted to cut down were outside of the wetland area. Um, did you have any comments, Dave? No, it was pretty straightforward. The trees that have been cut down were, had um, some serious ant damage in them, and I didn't see any problem with that. And, and the ones that were marked to took down as well also had some damage on them. So. I made no problem with those trees coming down either. Um. And if you were there, and yep, I was there. I just have a, I guess one question I have about this that I'm just having a hard time understanding. According to the plans, is where is that hundred foot um, limit from the wetlands, roughly? Where's where's the jurisdictional area? Um, the let me see, plan. Because this, is this the... See these two trees back here? These two yeah. trees? Yeah. I 
if I remember, <coughs> there were ferns. Were the ferns? Ferns behind. Yeah, yeah behind right around to the left. here. And then this was, was look, I think this was a mound, if I'm thinking of the same site. Which plant do you have? Yeah, this I have one the ones that came with this middle. The ones with the trees. See this, these two trees back there? I thought the wetlands were like right there. Okay. That's those trees right there. Right. So, so the wetland comes like that. Yeah, see that, yeah, this okay. is mounded up. That right makes here. sense. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so 100 feet from there is roughly like mid pool or at the end of the pool, back of the house. I'm just trying to get a sense. This, 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 this map here, the, uh, the I saw the, the nines, I think that, that kind of shows you the. Uh, did the, oh, you, yeah, did, you did the distance from what was on the, <coughs> on the map. Right, so I got all the right, which is the uh, GIS, the Reading GIS. Right, which has some inaccuracies, which is why we go to do the site visit. That's, that's what I'm, that's kind of my. I would put it like this because that's what I, this is supposed to be 106, so. Ooh, wait, wait. Oh, really? <laughs> sure, yeah, here you go. However you want to. <laughs> you do it. Oh, all right. Tell so you what. Give me a second. Right I'm going to scale it. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. How do that? Um, well, tell you what. We'll do the 50 and the 50. Two, four. So, 1,000. So, that would be uh, two, four. So, yeah, it's kind of two. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a radial arm <coughs> to the edge of the pool. No, it isn't. No? This is not wetland. So that, that well, I understand, not. but if you're, you know, if this is wetland, then you'd be doing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I have a scaled ruler. That's, I, I have that. Thank you. All set. Um, so here's the aerial, if you want to look at it. No, I just wanted to just make sure. I, s I understood where that was. Um, so that would be the point to me is that all of the work is outside of the 35. It's yes, I would, I would say the work is definitely outside of the 35. Yeah. Well, if you're pretty certain based on field information. Any other comments, questions from the commission? Everything looks okay to me. Any comments or questions from the public? Okay. I hear a motion. Make a motion to negative determination of RDA 2019 9 1124 Main Street, Map 39, Lot 142, Gal. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, 740, <coughs> we have a notice of intent. I guess we don't have a DEP number yet for Veterans Way, Lot 5, Map, map 45. No, we, we do? Yeah, we don't. I checked today, we reached out about a month ago, because it was an older one, I guess. Yeah, they're sticklers, huh? They haven't gotten them yet. So this is a new notice of intent, right? Um, technically, it's, it's continuous. Is this it continued? Is. Yeah, it's continued. Okay. Um, All right. we, we went through the exact same thing in the office. It's, it is continued. Really? Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Um, the players were re-notified as well because it was continued for <coughs> uh, last June. So. You guys are familiar with the Veterans Way, the Veterans Way project. Um, this is the last lot that hasn't been built yet. Um, the notice of intent was filed last June um, for a two-family house. Um, I know there was some discrepancy with the building department and whether that would be allowed. Uh, the meeting was continued with, with you, got, you guys. 
and um, everything has been revised to a single family home now. And uh, beyond that, very little has changed with the plan and application. Um, I know the notice of intent um, the narrative, the only <coughs> phrase we changed was, was two family to, to one to one family now. Um, the house is, is practically in the same spot. We did slide it a tiny bit closer to the 35 foot um, no build zone, and the driveway shifted a little bit. Um, those are the primary differences. This drainage structure here is, is currently installed, REN. Um, and I know this retaining wall is shown along the back of the property separating the house from the 35 um, no build zone hasn't been built yet either. Um, there's, there will be a significant grade drop there. But, um, you know, through the current vegetation, the you know, 25 or inside the 25 foot is all, is all being um, kept. There's no changes to that area. Um, these are all existing trees shown here. And everything is staying outside the 35 foot build zone as well. Um, this driveway has sloped down a little steep. I believe we have a 12% drop in this portion. So we propose a guardrail just to help the homeowner out in a small trench right here, about one foot deep stone trench to limit any water running off into the wetland or buffer zone. Um, so that'll just capture any, any salt or, or whatever, or you can't use salt in this area, but any runoff that would potentially you know, cause any erosion down, down gradient. Is, um, we have a big slingshot to catch the cars in the winter time <coughs> going down that driveway. <laughs> So on the plan I have, um, it looks like there's maybe riprap overflow discharge from the from the um, drain. Mm -hmm. That's in the 35. Um, has that been installed? And is that this, uh, this has been installed? Yeah. That's been installed. Yep. Okay. Yep, that was associated with this the, this, the whole project's right. drainage. Yep. Can you, can you show me the 25? I think I saw the 25, but where's the 35 foot? The 35 is right inside of this retaining wall, the kind of a red, faint red line. I know it's kind of hard to see, but just on the inside of that stone wall. I know on your plan it's, it's actually quite hard to see, but it's on the wetland side of that, that retaining wall. Well, okay, the 30, the reason I had a hard time seeing it is that the symbol for the 35 is a long line, dash, long line, and what I see is a okay. See what I'm saying? I do. <clears throat> what is it? Where is it? So so the line's wrong. So so the line runs unless it's shown differently on that plan, but it's it's shown on our plan. It should it's be right definitely there. shown differently. Mm. This is kind of a faint red line just on the inside of the retaining wall. This is the, this is the right line weight, but it's the no, no, same. that's the buffer, the 25 feet. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like pump up. 35 is supposed to be right there, but see, it's like yeah. so it's so it's it's this dash line right here. Right, but look at your plan. That isn't the same thing. Yeah, that's a different. I don't know if you yours didn't is like the this. There. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the 25 is the right line. <coughs> yeah, right. I got that yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then sometimes with the, the when you draw it. Um, oh, I can see it. it. No, I can see it. <laughs> what? So what is the little the little thing then? Oh, it's 260. Yeah, it's so an elevation. That's, that's just an elevation. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I know. Got it. <coughs> no, that's okay. Got it. The lines. Okay. You get a little mixed up sometimes. Never mind. Any questions from God? Yeah, I guess the retaining <coughs> wall, can you just remind me how high that retaining wall is back there? So, so it's, you're going from 202 to 208? Yeah, so it'll be about, it'll be about six feet higher. It's supposed to be about six feet high, uh, at least in this spot. Um, over here, it's about a 209 up here, or a little bit higher than 208. So on this portion, it might be a tiny bit higher. So did this change dramatically from the original? Uh, we have a copy of the original here too. Is that gonna is that gonna be an issue with 
the animal traffic. <coughs> That's it. Hmm. So the wall looks yeah, it's the major difference of the driveway on the side. Um, that was the previous? Yep, so the driveway is now over here in it. The house shifted a little bit this way. <coughs> okay. So then you get the wall cut off pretty much the entire northern. Um <coughs> have you gone through planning board? Uh, is there an issue going through planning board? Do you think, I guess where I'm going, do you think it's the plan is going to change again? The plans won't change, and I actually had engineering approve that driveway before we came here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and Jackie, is this retaining all this approvals for, yeah, for the other lots as well, right? Yep. Then it was continues. It goes from five through four and ends at the detention basin between four and three. <coughs> is there going to be any fencing along um, along Main Street? Um, I'm currently working with a buyer who I think will fence it, but it's not part of my plan. So, but there, the only fencing I really have to do is around between four and three that detention on there. But as long as the buyer understands, they'll have to come back for a permit for them for the fence. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably be back for a fence on lot four too. Okay. Are there any proposed grading changes in the back? Uh, I believe this 208 is kind of difficult to see, but this 208 is bumping out a bit. <coughs> I know that. 202 isn't 202 new? Uh, because it's just outside the 25. Right, 202. 202 is, is over the other side of the retainer wall. So you're saying 202 is grading between the 35 yeah. and 25 foot? Right. Is that necessary? I'm sorry? Is, the, is grading necessary between the 35 and 25 foot zone? Is there a need for grading in here? <coughs> so, it looks like it's just to keep, the, to keep a parallel, like, so Maintain similar grades. Yeah, but well, I don't know. You could leave so it. This was yeah, you could leave it. Is the 202 an existing spot grade? That and what? Uh, I believe this is no, proposed. proposed grading. It should be proposed. I'm just trying to figure out why. I guess it. I guess this is the 202 existing up here. This ties into it. Um, I'd rather not see filling back there. Yeah. Keep that as as untouched as possible. Can't really get it. Can't really see it too well. I'm sorry. It's okay for this yeah, yeah, I got two copies. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like they they just wanted to, maybe it was to help with this. You know, pick these up, pick these uh, two outlets. Well, I up think, a little but bit. these are already these are already right. installed. Yeah. So, so you, there's no need to grade down here. Right. I just yeah, I worry that, the, that it could be related to these, and that it's already just a bunch of them might be already done. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, there's really it doesn't appear to be no much need. of a reason. I think this comes up a little bit, so you're dealing with. I you think know. a little localized mounding as a result of the construction of the outfalls is is a reasonable thing. But, yeah. But I mean, I don't think we need to, you know, cover all the existing soil back here mm -hmm. with additional fill. Right. right. I mean, it's it's a very minimal amount of, of earth moving. Well, um, if you if you go south though, it's. Quite, it's a, you know, it's probably four feet over forty feet, right? The mm -hmm. two continues parallel with that wall. If you go south. Yeah, and, and again, I think this this is the two hundred two. Um, so I fear that they've already done some of this grading. I think this was already this portion might have already been approved <coughs> uh, because this probably came down here with the installation of this structure here. That makes sense. But is the wall installed? This wall is not installed yet. Right. Yeah. So, so, so maybe this, any, all this grading is still up. So up maybe for grabs. Yeah. So maybe any grading that's not done associated with this structure, we can avoid. Hopefully, I, I don't. I think that would be pretty reasonable. I, pr I prefer to see yeah. minimal grading it, inside the 35 foot. Yeah, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. I know, like I said, some might have already been done associated with this, but this portion, if it's not done, I don't see why it would need to be. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree. I don't understand why you're grading and back that retain wall. So it does not. So with that, that'll be a condition in the order. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. agrees. Absolutely. I think a little localized, <coughs> you know, within five feet of the of the outfalls is outfall riprap should be reasonable, just to so you don't have crazy erosion around your riprap. Right. Right. And I think everything it's gotta be. everything to this side yeah. can be kept natural. We address plantings here in another part of the subdivision plan. I remember this project. I was here for this. Okay. The two families. Okay. The, there weren't many trees cut down on this property. Right, because there was an existing house. Yeah. And right. I remember. Open in the back. I remember. Okay. Um, so we could look through and get those orders and find out about, about that. Because then you get where the 202 does kind of come closest to the 25 or 30 or 25. <coughs> There's a couple of existing trees that maybe could benefit by not being disturbed there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like an evergreen and something deciduous. Yes, mm -hmm. right, yeah. I mean, there's going to be some disturbance in the area because yeah. they're in installing this massive wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's going to cause a it little bit of disturbance, but... Um, it shouldn't cause additional filling or excavation. But there's a fence on top of that wall, isn't there? There has to be, right? I think you might be right. I think you, of, I mean, you, you for, for safety yeah, reasons, for it feet, may yeah. be required, I not by us, by yeah. another department. Right. Four feet. Four feet. Yeah. So, did you do you have the um, uh, deer is jumping over that located on this plan? Um, maybe you're, maybe you're what else? Yeah. Are all those trees okay in the back? Trees are fine, propane's not there. So, if there is a fence, there's so a fence and propane we can do a later meeting. We have to come back. Okay. Did they ever put the gas in that, that street? Did I miss no, propane? Is, are they, are they burying the propane? Mm. <coughs> Any other questions? Any questions? So, are you you're infiltrating the roof front with this? Is that? No, I don't believe that ties into the to the roof. No. no. Um, we are we are yes. after the other ones. That's not the we usually ask. Sure, we for. did. There's a huge infiltrator there, though. So, where are they gonna? I mean, I'm sure they could. <coughs> Do you think that it's possible to tie into that? Hmm. I guess I assume it was. I'm sure it's possible. Right. <coughs> yeah, it goes over, it goes over land, so it's going to pick up all the phosphorus and all the you know where, where you're putting on your lawn and fertilizer and things like that before it goes over. So we typically ask for infiltration. I think they're called out on the other two houses. Yeah, they are. Okay. Subsurface recharge system. possible to tie to this uh, this line somehow. Uh, see why we we'll leave that for you guys to yeah. decide. I think that would have to go before engineering because if that's what the street one off is tied into. So Yeah it's gonna be hard to do the whole house though. <coughs> so you might need to think about that. Is that been a requirement for each lot within the subdivision? 
the ones within the 100 foot. You can actually bring it from the corner underneath the deck and then from that other front corner, the north corner of the house, and put something in the front corner of the house. That's it. There's enough room, I think, between the main street side of the, of the house and the infiltration chamber that's there. Mm -hmm. Like right in front of the width dimension of the deck. Are we continuing this? I move we continue for this um, notice of intent. Wait a minute. Before we do that, are there any comments, questions from the public? Okay. Any comments? Uh, motion to continue. Notice of intent for Lot 5 Veterans Way. Um, it's a mo minor modification. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Just before they leave, just to make sure you know what we're asking for for the next one. The infiltration of the, the roof runoff. Yep, yep. And, uh, um, so, yeah. And we can look at the grading. The uh -huh. grading outside of the 35, between the 25 yes. and the 35 foot line. Yep. We have the grading, we have the check into the plot plan, make sure you cover yourself on the trees you're taking down. Show us where the propane tank is since we have time. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, it's a potential trade to roof runoff. That's the recharge system. So that's what I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a request for determination of applicability 2019 8, 188 Forest Street, Matt 32, Lots 237, Castiglia. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Scott Castiglia. Um, what we're proposing to do is we have a, a side entrance to our house. It's a, a staircase that comes up into a mudroom that you know has a side entrance and then allows us into the kitchen and to the to the back room here. So this is a, the side entrance, the mudroom comes into the kitchen, comes into our back little family room, which then comes out into a deck. Um, what we're looking to do is this this structure here over time um, has started to kind of sag off of the house. Um, we're guessing it's something when the initial footings were put in, it's been there for about 35, 40 years. So I don't know if there was an issue you know, with the footings or, or why, why it's uh, sagging, but if you look at it, it's kind of you know, slanting off the house. So um, what we're going to proposing to do is demolish it and rebuild it. Um, it will be exactly the same dimensions and footprint as it is now with new footings. Um, because we're within the 15 foot setback area, um, we're not allowed to change the footprint at all without going in front of the zoning board, which we want to avoid. So um, that's why it's going to come down to basically go back out exactly. Uh, you know, it, it, it is now better structure with sound. Um, there are wetlands. Um, here's the 100 foot setback. Um, here's the 35 foot no field area. The wetlands are behind the fence. Um, we were actually here about six years ago. We had taken out a, a large pool that was in the property backyard when we bought the house. Um, um, so this is kind of a, um, a little bit different. We were a lot further this last time. We were uh -huh. right up into the wetland so you know, but uh, because of the because we're still within a hundred foot buffer zone uh, you know, that's kind of why we're here requesting the uh, determination of what we look the footings that that you're removing are you putting in sonotubes we are um oh well um it's it that's it and, and our contractor is is working with that in terms of the, the footings I don't know the exact footings he's putting in. So he's working with the building department? He is, yes. Okay. Yeah, Edmund Colgan's our contractor. And in, in the, in the, the piers are just wooden things now? The the structure itself? Like the posts? Yeah, the posts that sit on the ground, you know, hold up the structure? Yeah, it's just it's wood. Um, it's, a, it's a wooden structure um, that, you know, it's, it's open underneath. Um, Underneath the mudroom, it is open. Am I asking the wrong thing? 
Well, I don't know. So it sounds like you're at, you're wondering about whether it's going to be just some sauna tube footings, like those tubes with a Bigfoot attachment to it, or is it going to be a frost wall or a full foundation? But we can put in, if you felt uneasy well, about the... the well, you know, it will not be a foundation. It will be oh, tubes. Oh, yeah, tubes. I, yeah, that's right. I know you're... Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it will, yeah. I guess it will, it will be sauna tubes then. Okay. Um, it definitely will not be a foundation. It's going to be footings. Footings, okay. Yeah. Sauna tube footings, yeah. okay. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, it's straightforward, yes. Yeah, yeah right. and it's further away from the wetlands and the existing deck and house. Yeah, yeah and yeah. like I said, this was all yeah. already approved. This is a deck itself. Yeah. That was part of our original yeah. plan for the pool. Um, yeah. That was all done at the same time in 2013. So I have one additional question. Um, considering all that that we just learned, um, in my opinion, this applicant does not have to put out erosion control for this project. Is okay. that something that you scored? I would say not. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the backyard is completely grass. Um, when we took out the pool, we, um, you know, the, the approved grading was done, and it is completely uh, complete. It's a nice lawn now. Okay. Kids use it. So uh, there was a pool there. Yeah, there was in the back, and we took it out. <laughs> the pool came right off. This is a new deck, but it came right off the back, and it yep. went, you know, right, really went in a are there few feet of the way. <laughs> are there any questions from the public? Make a motion for a negative determination of RDA 2019-10, site-8, 188 Forest Street. Second. All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pause for a second. Hang <laughs> Okay. We have a request for determination of applicability for 2019-10, 14B Street, Map 29, Lot 42, Nay. Finally. Sorry. Yes. No. no. <laughs> um, I'm Martha Nice. My husband Thomas. We own 14B Street, which abuts the Timberneck Swamp. Um, the northern lot line of our property that provides us nine focus lane, which is to the north adjacent to our property, is divided by a, an existing um, wall that's about two feet, two and a half feet at its highest point that sort of feathers into the property line as the grade continues inward from the swamp. Um, the existing wall was um, built by the prior owner to us. We've been in the home for four years, give or take. The prior owner um, established this wall, built this wall, I think back in the 80s, I'm not entirely sure, but nevertheless, the facade of the wall is constructed of railroad ties, which are just beyond their useful life. They've started to crumble, as they do. Um, so we are proposing or seeking a permit to actually remove those railroad ties um, that need to be disposed of because of railroad ties, um, what they were dipped in way back in the day. Um, and we are proposing that the, the wall be um, replaced not with railroad ties today, but actually field stone secured by concrete with a crumbled stone base. Um, and that is going to um, abut the Timberneck Swamp property um, and then run inward and the wall will get shorter as you go in from the, um, the swamp as the grade changes. So we are working with our contractor um, who um, personally, his home abuts conservation land in Woburn, so he's very sensitive to these topics. He is um, uh, going to be doing erosion control here at the line with the swamp, uh, either um, straw socks or silt screen. Um, to make sure there's no runoff or erosion during the actual project timeline, which is about three and a half to four days, building in um, what he thinks is more than sufficient time for both cleanup and break down at the end of it. Um, he's also, actually, this is, I think we had a different map, that um, there, there will be some staging areas here as well for concrete sitting and staging, you know, day to day during the actual project itself. Um, and, uh, and I should have noted, and you'll see here, you would have seen the application, that because of the grade and the orientation of the wall, which actually faces the property behind us, we've been granted permission from our abutter at night, Crocus Lane, um, access to the wall through her property. Um, and we have agreed to lay, our contractor will lay um, plywood planks, basically running from Crocus Lane, where the landscaper will stage his truck, all the way to the, law, to the wall, and then sort of east-west along the wall so that he can complete his work. And then at the completion of the project, uh, we are agreeing to also just seed and loan the lawn to the extent that there's any disruption from his work over the course of a few days. It's a nice neighbor. 
And <laughs> she's never um, <laughs> um, wait a minute. Um, we actually we ask questions first, okay. and then we open it up to the public. Okay. okay. And then when when we do that, um, you just give your name and where you live. Okay. Any questions from? I have a, yeah. I have, uh, yeah. Um, so. Um, when the existing timbers are being removed and the crushed stone is being put down for the new wall, um, I guess it looked to me like there might be some difficulty with trees and stumps very close to that existing wall. And I just bring that up as a potential one possible complication to the wall construction um, just to comment on. And I mean, I'm sure people are capable of, of dealing with that, but um, something I'd like you to address. And also, when the crush stone is put in, how deep do you think that there, he's gonna go laying that crushed stone? How deep do you think he's gonna have to excavate to put the crushed stone before setting the wall? Sure, so he has made um, clear, to address your second question first, he's made clear to us that the wall will just replace basically the state footprint of the um, so I'm not sure how deep it currently goes, but he's not planning on doing any excavation to that end. The stone wall will be a little bit deeper than the railroad ties are, so it's going to be about 16 inches deep, the, the finished right. product. Um, but as far as going down, I'm not aware of any... Um, and he'll be cutting into the grade? To yes, so the property... The wall, so he's removing more earth and, and right. The wall's the highest point here, and then it kind of yeah. Yeah. changes like this. Yeah. As far as the trees, I did talk to him about that. He accessed, when he came and surveyed, he actually um, scaled the side of our property to look at the wall this way, which is exactly probably the trees that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, there are a few others yeah. um, along the way, but he, he did acknowledge that, and he seemed to think that there shouldn't be a problem working around it, because there is, so our patio around the pool is concrete, right. and then there is a, um, I don't even call it, a little bit of a boundary of, of dirt of some kind, um, so he thinks that he can work with that dirt, maybe pulling out a little bit of the, that fill to work around the tree. So I assume this wall is going to sort of be built like from the existing railroad tie area into, yes. into, right. into right. underneath that concrete. So I, don't that that go under, I don't know that it needs to go underneath the... Yeah, I, I didn't have a good sense of where the concrete starts. And There's actually that, a so. fairly, I don't know if it's I 12 or 18 inches, but fair buffer between the actual okay. fur ties and where the concrete and the existing fence sits. So he thinks that, he believes that that wall is not going to impact our fence or our concrete at all. That was all installed in, again, okay. back in the 80s and he thinks all the natural settling has occurred and it's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, so if you guys, did you ever find out which, uh, which direction he's going to start from or is it I did something not. you can't? So I'm figuring he's just going to dig down a foot, fill up crush stone, and start from there. Um, and then tree protection. Just probably add that to the order just to say that we need tree protection because one of those trees is great. Mm -hmm. And as you get further away up this area, so that's the that's the is, they, that wasn't so such a concern. I think there's a stump there too. Do you think you do that stump? I don't think that's our stump. I think our neighbor pulled that tree out of the way. Just wondering. Yeah, no, that wasn't our job. So out of all that stuff, there was just that one tree that was best. That's the neatest thing. It's still like that. It's still like that. It's still So that's all. Do you know if you mentioned any kind of tie back for the corner of the wall where the railroad tie wall and the rear wall? Uh, weave together? That I don't know. I would leave that to my contractor. He studied that corner and that portion of the world pretty well. So if he has to weave in some new timber so we could make that work. The easiest way to do it is just to drill down through and put a piece of fence pipe and put a cable and bury it underneath the stone wall. To see here. But if he had to do some work in that area, would you uh, would you approve like say eight feet, ten feet going in one just to tie it in? Well, it's not. Be just.
Uh, I mean, if he, if he has to take it down to actually bring it out to a corner oh, there, it's a some of the, the, yeah. the railroad ties yeah. weave in, it's it's a stock it, fence, it weave together a corner, so it stops. So yeah. he's going to have to do and something. I think that the tower that we're replacing <laughs> may not even do that any longer. I mean, yeah. I know there's something, some consideration there, but I, I do believe that they don't even serve that purpose yeah. any longer. Right. So it's, but I'm sure your guy knows what he's doing. And, so let's just ask it one more time. So if um, the contractor needs to go around the corner to tie the stone into the timber, are we okay with that? Is that is that some part of something he needs to come back with? Because it almost seems like Dave's saying we should consider approving or saying that's going to be fine with us yeah. now. Okay. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Carl did bring up a, a comment about the length or the width of the bottom of you know how tall the wall is at its highest point which is this corner mm -hmm. um, it's about two and a half feet tall and then it pretty quickly tapers, tapers down or yeah. downed and yeah I think I, even I, at this point it's not I, even I, it just high more of what you were saying about I mean the timbers are probably what eight inches or something yeah, probably. So, so it's gonna, it is going to be a Yes, it's going to be probably, sure. he'll probably have at least a 24 inch or 30 inch base, I would think, at the bottom, and then go up. No. For 16 well, inch got a, no. He's got to stay on the, on the property line. It's a tight spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's working from the it's line. It's a tight spot, so yeah, I think, I'm sure, you know, with the stake, the property, <coughs> there's a property line stake right at that corner. Right. Mm -hmm. The stake's there, and he could put um, 12 inches of crushed stone so, there with 8 inches face stones with back of stones in there. Which well, I just, she, she mentioned 16 inches wide, that's all. So, yeah. so the base that's is... That's with the, with, the, with the face stones and the back of stones. So, okay. and then anything that's there would be unfilled as they're coming up the wall towards the top. You know, during the site visit, I didn't really... It was such a narrow area. Mm -hmm. I really didn't go in and imagine... Yeah. Know, sort of measure out how much dirt and, and t railroad ties were outside of the concrete. I went up on so. the other side where um, the uh, neighbor showed me where the, the uh, fence pipes were and sighted down the line and there's right. plenty of room there to actually in between the concrete and where the, the, the uh, pipes are delineating the lot line. There's plenty of okay. room there to actually okay. put the, put the, the wall in. It's tight, but he, 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 okay. said he did make all those considerations when okay. designing the wall. Um, any other comments, questions from the commission? Um, any comments or questions from the public? Yes. Okay. My name is Anna Jerry Murado. I'm the mm -hmm. I live in Nantex Lane. They were there yesterday. They noticed, um, I think, I hope they noticed how really it's a very tight area. Uh, my concern is even when they remove, because the way it is now, the railroad ties are here, they're here in between this dirt. So all that dirt, where is that going to go? Once they can remove just this side, because the other railroad ties that are within the wall are on also. So they, I don't know how they're going to work. First of all, secondly, I did not get any permission to anyone. I haven't seen anyone come on my property. Oh no, nobody has, so, except okay. for the commission to do the tour. Okay. We're talking through, through Bill um, okay. to get that permission okay. from you. Yeah, nobody has. I mean, I don't mind. I like to know who's. Well, I you know the exact date. Uh, right. What we've done, what we've done to see it ourselves and our contractors, we just actually a little bit of a ledge here. You can scale inside of our property and still stay on our side and right. look down the wall. So right. That's what we've done. Right. Right. I know. Yeah. And I, I think I asked the real estate I, agent. I said, please come over. Yeah. You and her come over and see. Actually, see and you know, just thinking what it looks like, you know. So, but she didn't. And, no, we didn't get that. But anyway, that's my concern that when they removed, the, like they say, you know, they saw them yesterday, they had decayed. Mm -hmm. And so, all that soil that's there has to be removed. Where's it going to go? It has to be removed before they plant or they built. 
that's a, that's up to the contractor to bring that on site and do whatever they need to do with it. Yeah, that we're not. We, we will stipulate that it, yeah. it, it needs to soil be. gets to, it has to be removed. Right. So that will be part of the conditions. I think um, the final version of the application, unless I gave you guys the wrong. No, I just grabbed it. I didn't look through it. So okay. The wrong one. Yeah, this is the earlier version. We did add two staging areas here just as they, again, it's like a three and a half to four day project. So in the overnight, the part of the scope of the plan is to dig out what's existing there, the railroad ties, as well as any dirt or, or right. that they're concerned right. about. And that's part of what our contractor is responsible for doing is removing that and then infilling with Okay, stone. did he also you say he hasn't come to see the property he has but yeah. he's seen it from our side of the property but he has he, he's okay seen so the has he really noted well that tree that's there the railroad tire has fallen has kind of start to cut the tree because the tree is holding everything up over there that's a very tight step you know area i don't know how he's going to manage to dig and cut roots and everything without having the tree die. That's my turn. Uh, you know, so yeah. this is why I think he really needs to no, look at it yeah. clearly because I think it's a little bit more than what it meets the eye, I think. That's, yeah. so I just want to make sure that if the tree is there, it remains there. Whatever I have there, it remains there. It doesn't get destroyed. I don't mind people having to come over because I know they have to do that as long as they are considerate of the situation, you know. And like you said, the beginning by conservation is it's almost 30 inches because I measured it before I came here. And then it slopes and it goes down. Where the tree stump part of it is where your fence ends. It's actually my tree stump. It was there when we came up in this, you know, when we moved here. Um, the offense ends right in between where the stump is, in between, halfway. So whether it can be avoided that you can end the work before just the stump? before the stump, yeah. I'm not, I didn't take a good look myself, but you know, so. I mean, the conversations with the contract, he, he's, I mean, he accessed it from here and he studied this corner. I'm not the expert. He did tell me he felt good comfort that he could do this work within that scope. Um, and, and I would, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, this isn't like conservation opinion, it's just sort of my opinion as a citizen, but I would imagine um, the, you know, the sooner the wood, that that wood gets out, the easier, the, the faster this gets repaired. Of course, yes. You know, yeah, um, the I better it's going to be for your I don't have your tree. any problem with that. No, I'm just bringing up to yeah. uh, in front that the soil in between the, the boards, and so that's sort of, I imagine that first you have to remove the, the tires, get the soil, and then remove the inner tire because there's two right. set of tires. Right. At least I think that's the way I see it because there's lots of soil in between. You know, weeds have grown and everything else. And so, uh, so. And then, I'm sorry, I don't know what depth not that, but width of, you know, thickness of the wall, whatever it is they're going to do. He told us it would be 16 inches. And then again, from the property line in toward ours. So it would be 16 inches into our property line. Right, okay, okay. I, as long as everything gets done properly and no disruption of any kind, or destruction, I should say, of any kind, I have no problem, you know, so. It would be pretty well. <laughs> Much better than there. Yeah, no, I, I know I said before, I said it, it's really uh, dangerous the way it is now, you know, so anyway, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Okay. Hearing none. Make a motion to uh, negative determination for RDA 2019-1014 B Street. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Yeah, uh, one more question. Sorry, one more question. Um, I, as I understand it, there's a, an appeal period of about 10 days. Is there any reason to delay the work? Or can we start going? You, do you, you can start the work, but it's at your peril, I guess. Okay. 
That's that's why there's we tell you about the 10-day appeal period. Yeah. So that what what would really happen is um, you would have to put the wetland area back in place. So the only the only person that would appeal would be the direct the direct the butter. Um, so the faster this starts, you know, the faster they're finished. So if you're I think it's just that you two have to be comfortable with, with the situation. Um, so there, so there's a, so the way the order is written is there's a it says there's a 10 day appeal once it's issued. But that's optional and you can move forward at your own risk or the applicant okay. can. Okay. And usually what determines their own risk is if anyone felt that this project harmed them and they were going to appeal to PTP. So that's kind of what's on the table now. I don't uh, find that I should, you know, have any problem if they want to start tomorrow. It's fine by me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if you're ready. It sounds like you guys, between the contractor and your neighbor, you have some things you need to work out as far as yes, plywood and where the stockpile of materials and things are going to go. So that has to be yeah, done you could, first. You could start as early as tomorrow. Yeah. But you probably not ready, you're not ready for that, but, but this will be ready tomorrow. And then you can get everything else in order so that it could start as soon as tomorrow. Okay. And once you, you have notified, you say 10 days, you have a notice of? No, 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 there's no, 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 no. The abutters are, no, no, no. <coughs> I was say, yeah, the process for you is over. Um, uh, so they'll get the notice, and uh, this, you know, this was your opportunity to bring up anything, and then well, as far as anything else between you and, right. and it, that has to do with the lawyers and whatnot, so that's okay. that's not that's here. Agreement. Right, okay. No, my concern here was how deep was, you know, how high is the mm -hmm. uh, wall going to be, whether it's uh, tires or cement or rocks or whatever, because like she said, it's slope, so it can be the same, this, you know, uh, depth all the way across because here is deeper and there is lighter so and uh, also how thick it was going to be and mm -hmm. it's going to be this so the yeah. contractor is uh, someone that does this all the time he right. knows right. Uh, right how to set up the base mm -hmm. so what's visible is right. structurally sound so he's going to make make some field determinations based on his experience and that also has to do with how much dirt he needs to remove. So I think, I think you know, it sounds like it's a good contract or he lives next to a wetland area, so those guys are always so much better than yeah, other contractors. Okay. So, yeah. I don't question that he's not a good contractor yeah. or anything like that. It just, hey, who knows, if he does such a good job, I might have where to for him later. <laughs> there you go, yeah. No, I think I think that he sounds very con conscientious about, right. about the pro people's property right. and how yeah. to attack the Because he knows job. if he lives yeah. next to wetland, he's familiar with it. Yeah. You know, so all right, that's I have no objection. Yeah, we'll talk through Phil and open deck. Yeah, yeah. follow up tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello. Eight oh five. We have a notice of intent 270 0717 107 Main Street, Map 8, Lots 1, Palmer. Okay. And we had um, some requests from Jeff Graham. Je uh, Jeffrey Graham. Jeffrey Graham. Meisner Mr. Graham. Mr. Palmer at the last meeting. And um, Mr. Graham did not have enough time to provide that information so it's been they asked yes when was it yesterday or today it was it was basically about five o'clock yesterday yesterday I a, to i got a phone call so okay to continue to the next meeting which is the 26th of june right is it is it the 26th yes. i think i heard that yeah, yeah. June 26 um, is the next meeting. Yep. And Ms. Debebne mm -hmm. um, actually sent some emails to us and uh, had some more, uh, I guess, questions and 
So I didn't send emails to you. I sent a correspondence via an email to you. I emailed to Mr. Taroni, right, but not passed to it, you. He passed it on to us. Okay. But I didn't email you, or I would have. If I was choosing to email you, I would have emailed you myself. I asked that a copy of the correspondence that I generated via an email get forwarded to you. So um, I'm assuming you probably got that. Um, I got the one. I got uh, one dated June 5th. June 5th. Yeah. We all did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Not just me. Everybody else as well. Okay. Okay. And so I just wanted to again, like I don't know if it was formally put on the record or whatever, but our intent would be to conclude the previous um, directive given to Mr. Palmer with the concerns that we brought prior to him bringing the notice of intent which was relative to the cutting down of the trees and he was supposed to um, replant trees and replant vegetation that he took down um, and present a plan to you which he never did and apparently you're not seemingly holding him accountable to that. So I just wanted on the record that I, we are requesting as a butters that that be concluded. Um, and I don't know how the state is involved in that or whatever, but I'm gonna look into that because here we are again with another continuance. And it's just seemingly never ending. Um, so I just wanted to state that if it didn't, if I didn't convey in the past that I wanted to put that formally on the record, that I'm doing that now. Okay. Okay. And then I also wanted to um, ask how a are there, is there like a protocol in place for continuances with regard to something that's on the agenda and then right. just comes off like less than 24 hours they, if they haven't got the information they can continue and we we don't usually can't i don't believe we can hold them like oh you've got to do this in a certain time if it were maybe an emergency or a health and safety issue maybe but but this is an application we asked them for additional information which they weren't ready to provide they didn't have it yet and what information was it that they didn't have what what they were reworking the plan to create more buffer area on your side of the your side of the uh, property Okay, and so am I able to say as an abutter that like that date that it's being continued for, I'm not, I'm gonna be on vacation out of town. So is it possible to then, in, if, if you're not going to revisit, if it's your decision not to conclude the previous issue that I brought to the board prior to this notice of intent, then is it possible to have a date that's, that works for both of us? Because I would like to be there to hear and oppose. I mean, he's the one who changed the date right now. So seemingly, if you're saying unless it's an emergency or a health issue whatever then i'm asking you to have it on a date where i'm able to be here as well the applicant runs the process the commission is bound by the regulations when the applicant says he's done we have to close so one of the reasons why um it would be great if Mr. Brim or uh, Michael Parker was here. We 
could ask them that question because it would be, it's really up to them. They, it's their, it's their process, and they would have to say yes. We'll, we'll give you an extra week, but the commission can't um, uh, extend this without their permission. We can't ask them, but we can't do it on our own. Yeah, we don't have the. Because the law doesn't back us up with that, right? Yeah. <coughs> we could ask, but they could Are say. Are you sure of that? That you are not able to do that? Yeah, pretty 100%. sure. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because that seems a little. Again, Mr. Palmer is in control of everything, seemingly. Um. So, can we just back up to the to the prior? Um, plan that you asked him to submit. So, are you saying that you are no longer holding him accountable to that as a commission? Okay, can I just run through it one sure, time yeah. and then ask that same exact question? I'm just going to back up and show you what we were, were asking for. So, <coughs> what you're asking for from <coughs> that. So, this is Sans Bistro, this is the place we're talking about. And these were where the shrubs were in this area. This one here. I don't know if that's the correct number, but I'm just saying there it is. Well, there were trees also. Yeah, and then there was one tree cut right there and one limb. But the limb is nothing. We allow that, allow 20% of each tree's canopy to be cut. There was a more than part. one tree, there were several trees. How many trees did you have? I know there was one there. It was two smaller trees down the driveway side. But there were yeah. like yeah. three or four yeah. trees. Right. <coughs> How, what was the, what was the? I think the, probably the largest cow per diameter was probably somewhere between five and six inches. All right, so they qualify. So how many were there, three? Three, I believe. One, uh, three, one that was like between five and six, the other two were smaller. All right. So that's, those were, those were cut, and then he presented a plan very similar to here without my drawing on it. And they did come in and they didn't uh, draw the plan understanding our 35 foot line, so it was really too close to the wetlands. And then they came back with this plan, which, well, actually, this is the old plan. See, there's the 25 foot line. So we asked them to move this back to the 35 foot and then he talked about the trees he was taking something like five trees down in this area here and he was going to replant them around here and this plant here and that was at that second meeting or the first meeting that we reminded him that we wanted him to also plant for these trees that were taken down and he said he would so that was added and then we had a DRT meeting, uh, design review team, and he came in, and this was mentioned again, that we were really looking, the Conservation Commission was looking to add more land, more vegetation between this property and here, and this is the area we were looking at. So we had a tree in the center, he's no longer going to do that. This tree is going to move either here or up there, and they're going to try to work whether it's reducing it by one parking spot and then this becomes vegetated up here, or two where these two spots become vegetated. That's what that's what he's working. So we're gaining the we're getting the plants back that he originally on the original order of conditions had taken out for, over time through plowing over or just cutting. And we're gaining a little bit more buffer in this area here. And that's where, we, I think that's where we are, unless there's something else that you guys remember. And that's where we are. So we're just waiting for him to work on those plans and submit them for, yeah, so for the next, to make sure the drainage when works. he's ready for the next and possible I think he's, meeting. He, I think he's there, and they wanted to make sure that there was enough handicapped parking, and I think he's been able to do that. Um, and it's really, and then after we finish with that, he's going to the planning board. Okay, but this is all part of the new plan, which 
as I've said, we plan on appealing and that whole process is going to take some time. So I'm asking you to go back to what happened prior to him submitting to you a notice of, of intent when he took down the trees and the vegetation without a permit, knowing that he needed a permit based on prior situations that he, in decisions he chose to make without a permit. So as those discussions happened, he became aware, if he wasn't already, that he needed a permit. So we're talking about what he's proposing to do to get his new notice of intent approved. And I'm talking about taking the corrective action on what he did before he even brought this up. Because I, we feel that this should be resolved in the interim of waiting for this whole process to play out. Just to for, to, for me to understand this, I'm just going to ask you one something. So, the, what he cut down, uh, you're not, I, you're not saying we put these tree, put these back exactly where they were. Are you saying that? I'm saying yeah. The trees that he cut down, some of them weren't even in the in the wetlands. They were on the perimeter of. The, uh, that if, back. if you could find some other spot for these trees here, like in this area here, where it's more likely that... No, because that takes away a buffer in a different area. This here? Yeah. I just, I just want to be clear. I, I, I see that. Two different areas. So we are talking about replacing... That has, even if it did, in my opinion, have something to do with what he's proposing, that doesn't have anything to do with what he's proposing. That's a separate issue. That's, that <coughs> picture is what, what it looked like. That's part of the... Part of First the off, of that position. isn't even supposed to be there. No, it is. Well, yeah. it wasn't before. Hold on a second. Here is the original plan. That, that I'm talking about the vehicle that's oh, parked oh, there. Oh, I thought you meant the curb and all that. Yeah, um, the vehicle. And along with all, and I know this isn't really your issue, but there's just a lot of things that he chooses to do that kind of are in violation of what he agreed to do. So, and so if I'm if I seem like I'm like you know it is that does contribute to the to the concerns that you have in holding him accountable. You know? Because he never does. And he's never accountable for the you know, for the decision, for the choices that he makes that affect other people. Well, at this point, one of the things that Mr. Brim said that when he was in the last meeting is that he wasn't aware of the of the other situation, the situation that happened previous. And since he was made aware of it, that he is going to make the mitigation for the things that has already happened part of the plan moving forward. So everything but is. Mr. I, Palmer I understand is aware. what I, he is aware, and we as a commission are also aware. But I think one of the things is is that you're just not happy at the fact that we are in, enabling him to take care of the sins of the uh, past sir, in the I new in the new speak for me. in the okay. well okay then you i'm going to tell you what what my my take is that's your take okay my my take at me. this point is that mr Be mr Devon i'm Devon. asking not you know, him not okay. to speak can, can we be a little bit more right. civil so okay. for me at this I'm point it's you know civil. we're trying to you deal with things last time. we're trying to deal with you things know, that deal with conservation and only conservation. And at this point, there are issues that were raised about a tree that was cut, or trees that were cut, and trees that were removed. Mm -hmm. So 
we have actually discussed this with Mr. Palmer and Mr. Palmer in trying to deal with uh, providing mitiga mitigation for those things that have happened already came up with a plan to deal with those things that have already happened but also wrap it into a new notice of intent his uh, license site professional was not aware of the trees that he had cut until the last meeting he actually said that in the last meeting and he said that he would make a plan to provide mitigation for those things that have happened in the past as part of this new plan. Now, as this moves forward, we can approve this, we can deny it, but suffice it to say, he still will be held accountable for those things that have happened in the past. Whether we grant him this new notice of intent and grant him the new parking area, there's other, there's other, uh, other uh, facets that are involved, this DRT meeting and also the the planning board so there's other facets that are involved so they may actually say no but mm -hmm. if they say no and he's not going to get that new parking area you should be you should be well not, uh, well informed in fact that we will certainly address those issues that you've brought up um, you know, about what I he's just, done in the past can I just say though there's another mitigation from a long time ago also that came up at the last meeting. And so, you know, it there is something to holding somebody accountable. Is it mitigation for, for uh, just let me just ask you, is it mitigation relative to something that has to do with conservation? I believe so. Yeah. What is that? I I don't I was going to ask you if you could tell me what that was exactly because it came up at the last meeting and it was something with it could you just define mitigation like for me it, it doesn't necessarily mean replacing and putting back exactly where something is right it, it means it, compensating for in a way yes yeah okay yes. so there was something but honestly i would have to look back in my records to see that but right. i believe that that is outstanding which i didn't know of until we were here at, you know the last time i had faith that the committee would make sure that that happened and so you know that's part of like my concern and my being you know a little bit heated about it is that that doesn't seem to happen it seems to be said and maybe it's even well intended which i'm sure that it is but if it isn't done then then it's hard to sit and say you know have faith that it will be done later on it may be difficult, but I, if you recall, several meetings ago, I asked you one simple thing, and I asked you to have patience in the process. This is all part of the process, and this is a process that, unfortunately, you don't get to drive. No, Mr. Palmer and Mr. Palmer and the commission yeah. drives that, not the neighbor. No, you are a, I, you are a concerned I, citizen and a concerned neighbor, right. but you don't get to drive the process. Well, I get to oppose what you I certainly do. may. Yes, exactly. But at that. this point, it's you know we just keep on saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I understand that you're we frustrated, are here, sir. In in June, I understand and that it, this has been going on for months. So we are going over and over and over it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, we re we truly are, and we are no further sitting here tonight than we were in November, and the trees were cut down prior to November. <clears throat> okay, we're moving on. We have more on our agenda, and truthfully, Mr. Palmer is not here, and so we didn't open up this meeting, this notice of intent. So. Well, we have to that's move on. not what Mr. Taroni told me. Just he said that because it was already on the agenda, 
that yeah. it's a placeholder she, sometimes. She can talk because of Citizens Open Forum or... Right, you can talk, but, but you're going over the same, as Mr. Panette said, you're still going over the same thing. Okay, well, I have other things that I wanted to also add, so let me move on. I'm going to give you less than 10 minutes. Okay, that's plenty of time. So, so then I wanted to ask that... I know that there's also a meeting at the pl community planning. So the meeting, the upcoming meeting, uh, could you ask if it could be continued? And if it can't be continued, then how do I or we get our opposition on record to for our well, so to be that? Uh, you can always email, and your e emails are very effective. I, I actually think that you do those pretty well um, but if you're not here that's all you have and as far as continuing that's that's um, I can say to the, the staff planner or the or the planner that um, you're going to be emailing them and requesting uh, to continue that and explain it a little bit so they'll understand your email but you have to make the request you have to reach out to that board to the community? Yeah, to the planning board. No, that meeting I can be at. But that's <coughs> CPDC, is that what you're talking about? I'm talking about the continuance here on the oh, 20th. That's the 26th. To this, to this one? Yeah, oh, you want to talk to I'm going to be traveling, so that's what I'm at. I can make the other meeting because okay. that's like July something, and I'll be back by then. I can ask the applicant. You can ask me. Yeah, that's the, that's the only thing. But we may not. They may not. Approve. We can't. They we may can't not ask, agree. But we can't demand that, that the applicant that, and hold if they off. Come here. That would, in my opinion, would be a critical meeting to not to be at. I think it's been long enough for him to get his whole project together. So it's likely to be a critical meeting. Right, which is why I'm asking you. And I'll see, ask. and since I am not the reason. I'm at this meeting knowing it's a critical meeting, but I've had my travel plans for months and I can't change them, <coughs> or I would because it's that important to me. Can you request it and email that to me and then I can add to that and email it to them and I will call them also. So, and so what should I say? Just I, th I think you would just explain what's happening, how you're in a direct butter. This is something that you've been at, paid attention to, you, you, you come to all the meetings, and you just can't make this other meeting. You're just requesting that they continue with one more meeting, and um, so you can be okay. at the meeting where the decision will happen. Does the state play any role in that? In the continuance process? No. 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 Um, <coughs> so the state, the state jumps in when you feel like the commission has either done something wrong, and it has to be based in like what our, what our rules are, like the Wellness Protection Act. Like it was something there we missed, mm -hmm. like some something, and um, that's when they would get involved, and then they would review everything. So okay. usually how that works, if, if you're going to do it, is you would say, I want to appeal this, this yeah, certain that yeah, maybe number be in it, and included then you would say, because of these appeal. reasons, bang, bang, bang. That I asked, and like, let's say I asked, and they decline, then maybe that is something you could bring up in an appeal process. I don't know. But um, I don't want to go beyond my 10 minutes, so the only other thing I really wanted to ask you was um, how the how the decision here impacts the decision at community planning. So in the past, they they're they're independent. They want to they want to make sure that we're comfortable with the job with the project mm -hmm. and vice versa. Uh, the only thing that's come up where they've asked us anything is uh, curbing and I guess I guess if we decided that we didn't like 
all that pavement area, they would need to know how much we didn't like, so they would approve the same amount. So okay. Those kind of things. But how that happens is Mr. Brim hears from the commission that they want these changes. And then with all of our changes, he has to develop a new plan, and then he goes to the community planning people with that new plan, so everything's really there, and I have to write a memo. So you're approving or not approving here the to allow the intrusion on the wetland, so basically. Yeah, so it's not wetland, it's buffer zone. Okay. So the wetland would be just simply wet, and the buffer is the dry area in front Around of it that protects it. Okay. Mm -hmm. the wet area. Mm -hmm. So what the, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do here is everything that happens in the buffer zone has to have a permit. And um, that permit process is not to say no, it's not an automatic no, it's a how can you do your project without altering or harming in any way the wetlands. You have to minimize that first. And so the, the, we have some automatic uh, things to minimize. It's the 25 foot ZNV and the 35 foot no structure zone and our tree replacement policy. And so all those things which might be called boilerplate issues are most of the consultants know that from reading our regulations and they come in with their plan already with those in it so we are just looking for a little bit more usually okay and then based on that the the parking spaces etc is a decision made at community planning Yeah, well, bit, we're, we're still both. looking at okay. we're still looking at how much he pushes that development towards the wetland, okay. and and that's our job to make sure that it's not too close so it has problems. And one of the things we look at is parking, is where the runoff is going because the brake dust, the oil, the gasoline that drips on there, the dirt, and whatever, everything's running away from the wetlands. So that's not a concern. We pro we I would say we would want curbing all around this. We want to make sure he's outside the 35 foot. We want to protect what's left. You know. Okay. That kind of stuff. Okay. So I will email, email. and then when would the next meeting be after the 26th? It's the first meeting in July. Um, I think it's like the 12th or something. Oh, July. July 10th. I'm sorry. Okay. July 10th. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say I'm not trying to have okay. a disagreement <laughs> with you, okay? Certainly. I, I really am not. It's not my intent. I'm just trying to protect my own, right. you know. Right. Okay? Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks. For Thank the, you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, Old New Bush Business, um, Maylet Conservation Area, Order of Conditions, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Awesome. I know, I'm just, you know, following <laughs> some rides, maybe. <laughs> Chuck, you did great. Awesome. Got a little bit of that, too. Great. Sorry, I missed, I missed a good one two weeks ago. What do you, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. You, hey, so. What project um, do you here for? I sent this out. Oh, this is our next item. He's 113 Arcadia. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. okay. Um, right. So I sent this out to the last minute. Yep. Uh, the way this goes is uh -oh. uh, about a day ago, we got a call from DEP and they identified uh, a couple of things that they wanted changed and it was on their it was on their um, website, so I had talked to, um, is it Amy Roth? I got her name. Amy Roth, let's call it Amy Roth. Is it this one? And, um, is no, it? this is, this is Millette. That is 113. Oh, yeah. You said 113, I thought that's what he said. It, he is, but, but we're starting well, he's here now. for that, but okay, we're fine. starting with something else. Well, all right. Millette. Okay. <laughs> <A> mallet. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, this was just written. That's why it was okay. late because we got all those changes in it. And I think it's good now, but you haven't reviewed it unless someone got the email and, and did review it. Okay. When about did you send it? About the Like today. About like today. Uh, yeah, Millet. Yeah. You reviewed it? I did. I Great. scanned through it. I, you know, it was pretty, <laughs> it's a lot of pages. Yeah. That's day. Hey, that's our role. <laughs> yeah. It seemed really What time fine. did you send it out? Uh, it was probably like four, four or five. Four. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're reviewing other things. I was in traffic. Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can, uh, I mean, you can't really. So the, another problem we have is that um, the commission closed this hearing at the last meeting. And this is the 21st day. And this needs to be issued today. Oh, so there's, there's we're, we're, that's why all that, that effort went into this. Okay. So take your time okay. to review it if you want. But um, I'm good. Dave, you're good, I'm with, good it? with it. Yeah. Yep, Dave reviewed it. Yeah. I think it was I'll say. Great. I reviewed it because I I wrote, <laughs> you wrote it. it. Yeah. I I and I was worried about the EP. So what 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 was the issue with DEP? Check we trust. So they they called up and they said, "What's going on here?" And I said, "What are you talking about?" And uh, they they said, "Well, we looked at the site on an aerial photo and we don't see anything but swamp." And I'm like, "What do you got? Come on, give me a break!" Yeah, I mean, you really? That's all you looked at? And I said, "I got far from the site. They couldn't yeah. on the." I said, "I can provide." I can provide whatever you want to prove that there's a drainage or sewer easement where there's a raised area mm -hmm. because of the work and the side casting that went on at that time and pictures. And they, you know, they weren't warm about it, but they said, okay. And then uh, they talked about the fact that this, this originally came in as work next to a riverfront. This wasn't riverfront. And to get that exemption, which they first cited in their um, notice of intent, uh, which was a riverfront exemption for a pedestrian walkway, you can only be in riverfront. You can't be in two resource areas. And we have several resource areas mm -hmm. here. We have bank, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So that that didn't work. So we, we were looking for a, another. So we, what I wanted to do is a limited project. And I did find one. And that's what this is based on. It's a limited project. I thought it wasn't a riverfront area. It's not. It's, it's not. just all the other resource but, areas. But they the didn't know that. that. So they're they're looking at this being a perennial stream, and they're saying it's riverfront. How can you possibly use this uh, when the, when there's another resource area there? So we're talking buffers. So there's like bordering vegetated wetland. That's one resource area. Bank. Riverfront is another bank. There's no floodplain out there. That would be another one if there was. So you can't. You can only have one. So it was rewritten, and uh, we got it done. And it even has a uh, alternatives analysis. So on the back, I, I, I. This may take a while to sign. So, so should we we need to um, take time vote to yeah after we don't we have to vote to issue yeah to well oh no yeah you don't have to sign it now I did, I just passed that to you to, to, you to uh, can we vote to can issue. we sign actually everything at the, at the no end. you know what let's let's move on to one thirteen Arcadia okay okay, okay. one thirteen and. I don't have any. So why not 113 Arcadia has two things in front of you. The first is the conservation restriction with some of the changes um, from the state. The state, they're, they're insignificant. They're not substantive changes. One of the changes has to do with the amount of square footage that's inside this the, uh, conservation restriction. And the reason why it was reduced was because there's a portion of that land that's in the abutting town, which is Woburn. And so they took that amount out of the conservation restriction, and it's been reduced by that amount. <coughs> the rest of the stuff didn't seem to amount to too much. And what do we need to do 
Just, I, I mean, my recommendation is just to uh, approve the changes, okay. and then I'll let John Goya know that tomorrow, and uh, we'll just move forward with. Um, then I guess it goes to their uh, the state's council for final review, and then it's over. So we might be within four weeks after that happens. Of <coughs> finalizing this process. Okay. So all the tenets of everything that was written in that conservation restriction, restriction are all the same, other than just the changes in this document here yeah. that show the where the where the land is. Right. And the square footage. Right. Okay. And I, like I said, I reviewed it, and I'm 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 worried about every little thing. So it, it was only like the comma and some language, why, why is this, and why that. So it wasn't really anything. And I have a copy if anyone wants, wants to look through with the changes on it. Do you guys have that with you? This or anything? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we need we to do. make a, a vote to approve it. And then four weeks from now. So I make a motion to approve the 113 Arcadia Ave conservation restriction as amended. A second? A second. All those in favor? Yeah. So this is just a draft. You're going to get a final now. So, okay. so um, you're not going to be able to make changes. This okay. is it for us. Okay. So we. That was just a draft? That was a draft. It goes to the state's council. They'll finalize okay. it, send it back to the owners. They'll sign it. We'll sign it. It's, it's done. Chuck, do the other abutters get any notice of the conservation restriction abutting their property? Or no. I'm just curious. I mean, other than the ones that came to the meeting? Right. No, there's no uh, notification process. Okay. The conservation restriction. I mean, I'd like to think that they know that anything off their property is not for their use, but you know, some people do take liberties at property boundaries well, or don't or don't respect where the property boundaries are. And I just so there's. Um, I mean, we could put some granite bounds up or something like that. Or do something, um, but you get to uh, if this goes through, you you get to walk the property once a year and make a in report. the winter. That's what you're supposed to do. We have many properties. I don't think that happens with any of them, but um, that's you got to do some for that's, some of these properties. You got to do some serious bushwhacking. There's always some through. encroachment by Definitely neighbors. Sure, but this one yeah. is this has a homeowner that's going to probably right. watch it and well. And it has the uh, Longwood Conservation Area on the other side. And then there's one side that's just up against 93, so that's not a problem. No, I understand. I was just thinking the abutters on the, on the like, down here. Well, when it's finalized, we can definitely send them a, a letter and a map. Just, just might be helpful. Yeah. Keep. So if you can bring that up again when, yeah, when it's okay. finalized and when you have a yeah party. Let's hang on to it sure so all right so um if this has been approved so the second thing on the on the uh on the agenda is um you know something that you know something that we knew was probably going to happen with with this uh conservation restriction because they always seem to take longer than anyone expects but um, the house is finished, and it's it's been ready to move in for about two weeks now. And the uh, owner of the house, who've owned the property for a long time, are uh, living elsewhere. Well, they're uh, paying uh, all the all the utility bills and whatnot that are associated with anyone holding owning a house. So we got a letter from. Um, uh, John Gallant, who's the, uh, the homeowner's attorney, 
and he's written down his assurances that um, he's requesting that we agree to sign the uh, building occupancy permit allowing the homeowners to move in to the property and he's given us assurances that um, well basically his personal assurance that uh, that this we will they'll continue this process till the end and record it and, and record it and and, and and move forward um, the homeowners here tonight he's uh, um, he has a small family. I think he has three children, and his wife and himself. And maybe you'd like to say something. Sure, sure. Thanks for thanks for listening. Um, obviously, anxious to be in the house. To no fault of uh, conservation committee. I think just a little bit of miscommunication, mostly on our side. Our attorney and we were told things that unfortunately probably pushed us out of our rental agreement before we were ready to and they have subsequently have tenants kind of coming on the other side so uh, with three little kids um, softball they're all in the barrows of a preschool eight six and three um, we're obviously very anxious to move in and looking to just finalize the process and I wanted to give I guess my assurance that I'll see it through as well as my attorney um, we hope to be here for a long long time and uh, we'd like to move into our new house if possible do I hear a motion so the only thing that I would and it, it doesn't even happen but if I, if I was I think if I was, um, I only wanted the homeowners to be on the letter. I mean, I, mean, I think it would be more to me if this letter came with the attorney's signature and the, and the homeowners. So if that makes any sense to anyone here, I don't know if we have any legal people on the commission. No. So are you, are you satisfied with the attorney? He's, his first sentence it says they, the firm represents Kevin and Kristen Riley, so he's speaking on their behalf anyway. Okay. So he's acting as their agent. So that's basically putting the words in your mouth by saying that. So. So do I hear a motion? What, what are we? I, so I, are we releasing? Yeah, releasing? No, we're signing. You could just tell me that you basically authorize want me to, to sign the uh, issue to issue the occupancy permit. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I would I would say that yes. All those in favor? Okay. Great. Great. You're welcome. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. By the way, uh, happy life. Update. They're, uh, they're down. When's the opening barbecue? They're down. down <laughs> oh. No. What? Down too. They're down too low. Oh. Shit. And like the pressure yeah. of Vegas said whoever scored first was going to win. So <laughs> there's a lot of I, uh, a lot of people breaking uh, dishes around. Yes. <laughs> I said Sean would be screaming. Uh, um, all right. Did you? What about? I didn't sign that yet. It's, did you it's, sign it? I did. What about okay. the mullet? Chuck, was your alter Turner's analysis that last day first? Yeah. Why? Why did you say it was? And I got that it was an alternative analysis, but you said mullet conservation area Reading put bridge boardwalk project description. It's an alternative analysis, right? Oh, let me change that. <clears throat> Just circle it on that. I mean, if somebody's looking for it. Wow. That came out nice. Mm. Talk about the cross street thing? Yeah. Yeah. Kudos. Oh, yeah, I just, I walked by the there once in a while. Oh, you wrecked me, man. Down two. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. I had to look. I couldn't help it. I was hoping it was nothing nothing. So does anyone have any problem with the certificate of compliance for 56 Cross Street? Will we issue the certificate of compliance for 56 Cross Street? Second. All those in favor? Did everyone sign this? Yeah. I got four signatures. Fifty 
six cross street. We got that. And then we okay. get okay. The, then we get um, the town meeting article. Let's put that off. I didn't get the. Right. Uh, I didn't get a, a okay. meeting with um, Julie. I sent her an email asking her to go over. Is she back? She's here? back. She's back. So I, I sent an email asking her to go over the process of how to get an article on the warrant, and I didn't hear back from her. And I was really busy today and yesterday. Yep. So I didn't have any time. So we'll just, I'll just put that off until the next meeting. But we, but we would like to get, as it says in that piece of paper, on to And I think we can work. Our, uh, liaison on the, I, I was on thinking the, we uh, could just send it out to our liaison. Yeah. And, and, um, but the only problem with that is we haven't been some things have been told we've been told that yeah these are the liaisons and send them you know send them uh the agenda but direct contact from me i'm not sure yeah you don't like i'm reaching out to them so like one of you guys can do it you need a meeting with them anyway but i'm not sure that's i'm not sure i can't do that to be honest i with think you. you might be able to but you would have to cc that. If we need a, a, a warrant article, it has to come from the, I mean, it comes on high, but it's decided on the select board. Right. So we just can, want to start. Can, it can originate at the select board as well. Yeah. You don't need, we, you know. This is just a pro forma rubber stamp thing, right? <sighs> to transfer the. The, uh, the, it has the to be, well, we don't know. I don't. I don't know, I don't know the word. Day. That's why I needed to talk to Julie, and uh, really? I don't know what the process is. What it says in there is that it has to go to a town a vote at town meeting, so it needs a warrant. Right. Why wouldn't it? Why What's wouldn't it go to conservation? It doesn't. No, that has nothing to do with it. It's only the process of how to get it going. I think Dave's saying go to the select board. I'm just saying, let's just, I, I don't know, maybe we write something up and we send it to the select board for them to finish off. Who knows how the, what the process is? At this point, I don't. Um, The stick. So can we sign the order of conditions for the mallet conservation area tonight? We did. We just did. Oh, that's what we just yeah. signed there? Yeah. Can we get a bunch here to sign. We got a certificate of compliance. Right. Yeah. For the cross street. And then you have some meeting minutes. A bunch of them. Yep. So we wanted to shell out the Five thousand dollars a seat for tonight's game. Is that what it is? We're gonna buy the wife, and I got next. I can't believe that. My stepdaughter went to the Super Bowl. Well, yeah. All right. Can we just go? Because I'm, I'm, I want to go home. I know. I'm no. with the minutes. Listen, Are we gonna approve the minutes? We gotta approve all those minutes. All right. So. Um, yeah. Oh, this. Uh, How are we talking about the game? <laughs> I'd rather watch. Yeah. Um, what about the administrator's report? Are we skipping that? Yeah, DPW collaboration update, trails committee report, liaisons update, and nothing on liaisons. Mm. What about trails committee? I haven't seen trails committee have a meeting before. next Wednesday night. Uh, they're going to be talking about this Warren article also. They're trying to get more people at the trails committee because of this Millet project, and uh, they'll need uh, many hands to bring in these 400 pounds LVLs and to do this project. This project will, the Millet project will happen sometime in the fall. Um, DPW collaboration update? So monthly now I'm meeting with the DPW department and we're um, talking about a whole bunch of issues that come up right now we haven't 
really consolidated our thoughts on what we're actually going to be uh, doing, but mostly what we want to do is make it easier for the DPW department to understand what we already have permits for and to and for me to just be aware of the projects that, that are going around town. That so that's good. that's what's generally happening now. Sounds okay. really good. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes for approval, 5-8-19. I had no issues with that. I don't know no, that. I didn't either. No, I actually, I, we did review two, we said three, I think, didn't we? Bunch. Ten. No, there's oh. about, it's a bunch. Ten. Ten. 2018, two. We're still, I think this is, a, I thought the last bunch was the last bunch that we, to catch up on what we had in the past, like some of those like in last years, so. Yeah, I thought I was doing good. Some of them for this year. Do we make a motion to approve 518, 519? So moved. Second. All those in favor? I abstain. I wasn't here. It's an administrative vote. It doesn't matter if you're here. Great. Great. Um, 5-22-19, I did see that we did encapsulate Mr. Bebne, Mr. Anastasi, and Ellen House, I think, on the Leaning Tree Lane, which, yep. you know, that was one of the criticisms that were, right? I thought, I thought you did a good job of those. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any issues with that one. Nope. I move we approve the minutes of um, May 22, 2019. Second. All those in favor? 314-18. I move we approve the minutes of March 14, 2018. All those in favor? Second. All those in favor? Move we approve the minutes of April 11, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Move we approve the minutes of May 9, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Move we approve the minutes? Um, yeah, well, no. that's 18. I went yeah. and it wasn't. It's 523, 18, 18 nine, 19. Yeah. No, no, there's a 19 at the beginning. Got it. As well. Yeah, see the yeah. next one on the line? That is 18. I know. I said 18. Five nine eighteen. No, five twenty-three eighteen. So oh, the next one? one? Yeah. All right. Okay. Move we approve the minutes of May twenty-third, twenty eighteen. Second. All those in favor. Move we approve the minutes of June thirteenth, twenty eighteen. Second. All those in favor. Move we approve the minutes of June twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. Second. Right. All those in favor. Move we approve the minutes of December 10, 2018. October 10. It says October 10. October 10, 2018. 18. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? I'm sorry, Anika. Well, did we get 5918? Yeah. Okay. Did we approve that? Yeah. All right. Uh, I just want you guys to know that you're doing a hell of a job these minutes, and I was reviewing uh, Andover's. Do without you. I was I was doing Andover's, uh, looking through their website, and you know you feel like, oh my God, you know we have some minutes missing, and I understand that you're not supposed to and all that, but I if thought you, that we were the it, exception. Oh. Andover, oh my. there's they have. I mean, from years ago, they don't have minutes. I was looking all the way back into like 2014, and they have huge holes in their minutes. And will they have to go? Which doesn't mean, you know, like somebody jumps off the bridge doesn't mean you're supposed to, right? Read the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law. Well, I did. And I, it's supposed to, you're supposed to have those meeting minutes in a month or so. Right. Of. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the thing about that is everyone has their own interpretation. I can ask several people and get several different That's, answers. It says it right there. Wait. I was like, what? So I know also. Does it say anything about if you can't? You write, you write the minutes. Every, that's all these notes and I get it from you. You write them. And then we're proving them. And they got it. 
Well, you're I supposed to, to like look at them and say, "This is not exactly what I said." What yeah, because that's what when I, when I read the ones you sent or a couple of them, I'm trying to think of like you like you make comments and then I'm thinking, "Wait, is that how it happened or not?" Yeah, that's so it, it's response. it's a legal document that will be used in a uh, if someone wants to appeal something, they wow. take it. So we want to be as accurate as we can with our minutes. Yeah. And that's right. that's the reason. Yeah. And they'll they'll turn back. I don't know if the video, which it should be, so no the gospel, huh? it's probably the right. Best. Can um, we make a motion to adjourn? Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, what else do we have? Who's the guy that just oh, said I want to go? I get a man. I get Bill. I get Bill. Can I get an approval? It's not on the agenda. Sewer and water bill. Yeah, you said Second. none. Uh, for nineteen dollars and seventy-one cents. Sewer and water bill for the Pearl Street parking lot. I thought we were going to put that on, on Hayes' bill. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the, approve the water and sewer bill for Pearl Street. Hey. Let's go second. Second. All those in favor. Now I can make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Meeting adjourned. Oh.